So of course to honor that, I've made a Dean Stark shrine. Thank you, Dean Stark. We're back, and we're actually doing it. I cannot believe we're actually doing it. Either we're actually doing it, or I'm just playing around with a bunch of water, being really proud of it. Um, I ran out of carbons, so just pretend that these are carbons and not, I think they're supposed to be phosphorus. Just pretend. Just dream with me, okay? So last time we did some crude cyclopentanone and this time I redistilled it and got a 73% yield, have 167 grams of some really nice stuff. Um, purified some toluene, did some other stuff, um, worked on the photoreactor a little bit. I'll be posting a separate video um, with kind of like the side projects there. But in this episode, we're going to be making the Ketel. Uh, so we're going to first need to uh, reflux that toluene and make that PTSA, that paratoluosulfonic acid. And then at that point, depending on how long that takes, it's just depending on how wet it is, really. Uh, at that point, we will add our cyclopentanone and ethylene glycol that's been sitting over sieves for a week or so. So hopefully relatively dry. And at that point, hopefully the sulfuric acid has reacted enough to where it won't destroy everything in its path. We'll get that all refluxed. Both of the steps could take 20 or 30 hours. Hopefully not. Hopefully we have some good quality stuff and we'll get it going. Okay, we are redistilling our cyclopentanone after drying for 48 hours over potassium carbonate. I collected a little bit of the azeotrope, not much, so I'm really happy with that. This is a 30 mil container. It shows 131 degrees right now and we're hanging out there, which tells us we did our chemistry correctly, so I'm pleasantly surprised. Uh, we want to collect between uh, 125 and 135 just to count for the delays there um, we did have our first explosion luckily it was water so this return line started getting a little crazy so it grabbed it and what I did was I knocked that line out and it is a very powerful little pump I found out and it completely slammed against the against the ceiling of this little thing and uh, you know just basically exploded everywhere um, you know I had this uh, ready to go um, nice and dry and it was open and it was way over here and it got wet so that wasn't good um, we can attempt to bypass the second distillation it will use a taller big row column on the first distillation. However, with this, I can't. Yeah, so I would have to reorient this a little bit. Um, and for the next step with the Dean Stark and a condenser to reflux the toluene and the sulfuric acid, I am going to have to change this orientation. Luckily, this is. Um, just a little frame here so I will just flip it you know vertical and there are plenty of places to put the exhaust fan there and there and there so we will do that um, but just for this purpose um, you know I couldn't figure out a good way to do it to where I could fit the whole apparatus in here because that's only 24 by 24 right there. So that would be our floor if we went vertical with this thing. So I will have to figure something out there for future so I can do distillations with a nice big column like that. So we got 167 grams of this, which is a 73% yield. And I am very happy with this because it appears to be crystal clear. It is just it just barely has a scent and it came over 
at exactly the temperature that we wanted it to, which was about 131 degrees. So we should have some pretty high quality stuff here for our next step. Okay, just going over the setup here real quick. I have a one liter flask. I probably could have used 500, but this heating mantle works better with one liter, so I'm using that. I have a 20 mil Dean Stark trap right there. I just have my regular condenser. And then I have that, that thing from Reddit, like the antenna thing. And what we're doing is we're making PTSA in this flask because there are acidic resins that you can do to do this step and get better yields, but they are very expensive. And luckily, we have a way to get around that by making the PTSA because that is also expensive. So we just make that and then we can throw our, react our reactant right in there, our ethylene glycol and cyclopentanone in there and do that. And it's all thanks to this guy, the Dean Stark Trap. So of course to honor that, I've made a Dean Stark Shrine. Thank you, Dean Stark. We are about two and a half hours into this reflux, and honestly, I'm probably just gonna cut it off in about 30 minutes. Um, luckily, we didn't tar up at all, and that's nice and crystal clear down there. And then also, we really don't have much water at all either. There's, I mean, maybe two milliliters in there, but it's cloudy. So what I'm gonna do is shut this off and let that settle overnight. Uh, you know, just cap the top or whatever. Um, and then tomorrow, what I will do is reflux the cyclopentanone and ethylene glycol in there. We are gonna cut it off here, just about three hours of reflux. Um, so I figured out that the mill and a half looking phase separation there actually isn't phase separation um, it's just the curvature of the glass and if you look closely I don't know if you can see it on camera but there are tiny tiny little pockets of water like you know probably a tenth of a millimeter through this whole process so we're gonna cut, off, cut it off here and tomorrow we will make the key towel and then Wednesday we'll do the vacuum distillation because I need 
I have vacuum grease coming on Wednesday, and I don't want to do it without grease. I also have a, a gauge, too, because I want to keep it pretty consistent, so. Alright, here we are ready to do part two of this synthesis, and reflux the PTSA with the cyclopentanone and ethylene glycol. And it's now been drying for six days over sieves, so I would assume that it's extremely dry. Um, our PTSA looks awesome. And we really didn't have too much water. So I honestly don't even see any phase separation. Uh, I left this to settle overnight. Um, it does seem like pretty high quality toluene. Um, I'm just going to take off the first couple of mils just in case I added extra excess toluene anyway. So we'll do that and then we'll get this going. Just about five minutes into this distillation and our reaction has turned into this beautiful yellow color. So I am sure that is a fantastic sign. So we are actually getting water this time, which tells me the toluene was nearly anhydrous, which is incredible. Um, I guess we just got lucky. Um, I could be doing something wrong, but it, it looks to be going quite well now. So. Yeah, I think we're pretty good. We're getting about one mil every 10 minutes or so right now. We are about 30 minutes in, and we'll keep it going, hopefully, at least four hours. Um, you know, and then we'll see what we need to do from there. So, hopefully we aren't going to have the whole 20, 30 hours, but, you know, we might. <laughs> so, we'll see. About an hour and a half in, yellowed a little bit more down there, not too terribly bad. Uh, the water coming over is definitely slowing down. We're still going to run at a minimum of four hours, but things are going well. And uh, someone stole our Dean Stark shrine, so please pray for Dean Stark. I'm going to call it here. We are at about five hours. We have no more water coming over. So we'll go ahead and call it. We have turned the devil's color, unfortunately. So hopefully we're not screwed. Um, now we will, after this cools down, we'll wash it with a little bit of sodium hydroxide and sodium chloride. Okay, so we actually pulled that off too. We got about 300 mils of our crude key towel, and it's extremely dry. I put it over sieves last night, and it's 
it's barely taking off any water. I really can't see anything. So it's nice and dry in there waiting for us for Wednesday. So on Wednesday, I'm going to be getting my vacuum gauge and adapter to put it on my vacuum pump. And we don't really have to worry about that vacuum pump or destroying it. We can just beat the crap out of it. Uh, and we'll do that vacuum distillation. And hopefully we'll get a pretty good yield. Uh, things went surprisingly well. The toluene really didn't yellow up that much. The toluene had like zero water in it, and I don't even know how that's possible, but whatever. There were tiny, tiny little blobs of water in the Dean Stark, but that was about it. And then we refluxed uh, the full mixture with the ethylene glycol and the cyclopentanone for about five hours, and it's, it, it looks good. We didn't get any phase separation. Uh, after the washings, everything looked good. None of the layers turned out really weird. It almost concerns me a little bit because Tom from Explosions and Fire, when he was washing his with the, I believe it was the sodium chloride, he had like a black layer on the bottom and mine was like crystal clear. So it's like, I, I don't really know. I, I'm hoping that I just had less polymerized shit in mine, uh, just because I think I'm going to attribute it to the higher quality of toluene. I, somehow, the toluene's really nice quality. So hopefully that's really the case, and we actually made our stuff, and we'll find out on Wednesday.